Hey kids, it's Mr. Flaw here, hope you're well. And uh, sad times today, as it's the last ride that I'm out on the new Speed 400 from Triumph. It's gonna have to go back and join its friends at Hinkley very soon. So uh, yeah, sad times my last ride on the bike. But uh, in this video, what I'm gonna do is gonna run through the lessons I've learned during my time with the machine. So if you're interested in this bike, stick around and stay tuned. So welcome back to the channel folks and welcome back to the new Triumph Speed 400 and my final ride on the bike and it's uh, one of those unusual occasions here on the channel where I find myself sad as I said in the intro because it's uh, one of those bikes that has rather got under my skin during the time that I've had it. It doesn't happen very often, I ride lots of bikes here on the channel of course as I review them and there aren't that many that I'm sad to give back. Oh look there's a white van. But this is one of those. It's been an absolutely cracking machine and I've really enjoyed my time with it. Anyway, in this video, what I want to do is give you the lessons I've learned on the bike in the terms of kind of pros and cons. What are the positives and negatives about this bike that I've learned during my time with it? Let's get the negatives out of the way first. So, welcome to the garage then and for the, uh, the negatives, the cons part of my review, what don't I like about the bike? And we'll start uh, very simply with something that I suppose it's pretty subjective. It may seem minimal to you, but it's something that just gets on my nerves with some bikes. It's this here, it's these tank dimples here, look. You can see why they've done it. It's because you need to be able to get a good uh, turning circle on the bike, which you do. It lets the fork get into there without hitting the tank. And obviously it's the same on the other side. So these are these dimples here. And it's just something that seems to me like a bit of a bodge in the design. If you've got to start cutting bits out of the tank just so you can turn it, seems a bit wrong to me. Minor point, as I say, I'm kind of clashing at straws a bit with these negatives because there's a lot to like about this bike and not a lot not to like. So first thing, as I say, no particular order, tank dimples, seems a bit of a cop out on the design to me. Right, next up on my negatives list is again, it's a, it's a very small point. I'm kind of clashing at straws for these negatives, to be honest. And it's the, what I'm calling the lower grade LCD on here. Let me show you. If I turn the bike on, and it'll be, probably, maybe you won't agree with me here, but you see how this comes up here. It just looks a little bit, I don't know, noddy compared to other Triumphs. It's really no big deal. The fonts just look slightly different. It just looks, I think probably it's just different as opposed to inferior, but I think compared to other Triumphs, that's not quite as premium a looking LCD. All right, next one um, is actually one down this end is the switch gear on here. Again, just doesn't seem quite as premium as others. So, you know, they're absolutely fine, but not quite as substantial as it normally feels on a Triumph. Remember how they look, and I'll whip you over to my Speed Twin and we'll do a comparison. So there's that look. You can see it's got, like, you can see seams and stuff on here. If I whip over to the Speed Twin and show you that. Here we go, here's my Speed Twin one, and you know, it's, in, it's sort of similar, but I just think it's got a slightly more quality feel to it. And the same on this side, these switches here just feel slightly better. If I quickly from here, whip over back to the Speed 400 and you'll see, so remember what that looks like. And there we go, back to the Speed 400. These just aren't quite uh, the same quality, but again, very much clutching at straws here, very small point. If you just saw these on the bike, you'd think they're absolutely fine. All right, onto the next on my negatives list. And that is, at certain speeds, there is some blurring in these mirrors. They're quite cute, these uh, bar end mirrors that are on here. I quite like the looks of them. But um, they're not that effective. At certain rev settings, there's a little bit of blurring on them. So again, small point, but worth pointing out. All right, to the final thing on my list of cons for this bike, and this is the most important one, and it might just be this particular bike, but during the period that I've had this bike, it's had this weird issue, and I noticed it first when I rode down to Cassington Bike Night. You may have seen that video. If not, I'll put a link in the corner. I didn't mention it in that video because I wasn't quite sure what was going on, but uh, the basically what happens is on a longish ride, it has a propensity for the engine just to stop. It seems to be, I can't quite work out why, uh, because when the engine has stopped, you just notice that the engine's gone off, and then you know, Notice that the kill switch has actually been activated into the kill position even though you've just been riding it and no one's touched it it's very very weird I don't know it seems to be probably just when you go over bumps so I think there's an issue with this switch that has a habit of going into the kill position uh, without you uh, realizing and uh, whilst I wasn't going to mention it because I thought it might just be a fault on this particular press bike when I was riding this early this morning doing my intro exactly the same thing happened here's a little clip look it's happened to me now the engine has just turned off I was riding along and for some reason, look, the switch has jumped itself into shutdown and the engine's gone off. How weird is that? That's about the fourth time that's happened now. Very strange. 
So most weird that, and uh, very annoying if it was your bike, if it had that fault, because it's very intermittent, and trying to get, you know, demonstrate it to a dealer would be very, very hard. So it'd be very interesting to know if you're an owner of one of these, or if you follow the forums and so on, has anyone else talked about that problem, or is it just this bike? All right, that's enough of the whinging. Let's move on to the positives. Okay, so just like the negatives, these are in no particular order, and there's a lot more of these, so I'm going to sit down, I'm going to read them off my list. First one uh, is the price of this bike, 4,995, under five grand for a machine of this quality. The build quality on this, generally, if you look at it, you do a direct comparison with, say, my Speed Twin 1200, which is a bike costing uh, two and a half times as much as this, uh, it's all there, it's, uh, you know, there's nothing in fear about it. It's a proper triumph, this. Um, it's great, you know, it's just, it looks good, it goes well, the quality's there. I think 4,995 quid is an amazing value for this bike, so that's the first thing, and probably the most important, I guess. Uh, next up, the engine on this. It's a lovely unit. It's uh, It's got loads to go for a 400. I've ridden lots of 400 singles recently, and uh, I have to say, this one is by far my favourite. I don't know how uh, Triumph have squeezed as much oomph out of it as they have. I mean, it's not going to win any races. It's not a high horsepower engine, but there's more than enough for whipping around the lanes, which is the sort of thing that I love to do on this kind of bike. Next up, I've put here ability to stop the brakes on here. Actually, are fantastic, so that's another great thing. Comfort the bike, big thing for me. Uh, as I say, I rode it up to the Caston Bike Night, which is about an hour and a quarter's ride and an hour and a quarter back. So two and a half hours on the bike the other night. Absolutely no problems with comfort. You can ride this all day on a longer ride. It's absolutely fine. You could tour on this. It would be brilliant. Uh, next up, weight of the bike. Lovely and light. Uh, it's very flickable. It feels like moving around Mrs. Flyer's 125. It's super easy to live with this, thanks to the weight. So not only moving it around here in the garage, but also when you're on it, it just feels light. It's fantastic. Next, thanks to this exhaust, well, thanks to the exhaust and the engine, is the noise that this bike makes. It just makes a lovely low rumble. Uh, it's not obnoxious in any way, it's not too loud, it's just enough to let you know that you're on a motorcycle, I love that. Next on my list, I've written here, simplicity. This bike is lovely and simple. There's nothing to get in the way of the pure motorcycle pleasure of riding this bike. There are no riding modes, there's no anti-wheelie and all that sort of thing. You just get on it, start up and ride. It's great fun and I love the simplicity of it. This bike, thanks to that um, single cylinder engine uh, and the way it looks and the way it goes, is full of character. It's got bags of character in a good way, this bike. Another thing for the pros list. All right, and last but by no means least on my list of the pros of the Triumph 4 Speed 400 is the handling of this bike. It's an absolute joy to ride this. I've really enjoyed uh, throwing this around the back lanes over the last couple of weeks. It's maybe not a bike that you want to do long stints on a motorway, although it's more than capable of holding 80 miles an hour on a motorway if you want to. But uh, the handling around the back lanes is absolutely superb. If this is like a fun bike or a second bike, uh, just for going out on, on sunny Sundays, it would be fantastic. Also, it'd be brilliant if it was your first big bike or in Indeed, as a commuter machine, you could weave through traffic, no problems at all. Handling on this, absolutely brilliant. Love the Speed 400. By the way, this is summer in the UK. I'm recording this in the middle of July. The absolute height of summer. It's about 14 degrees centigrade and there's rain in the air. Oh, can't stand the weather in Blighty. Okay, so there we have it. That's, uh, that's it for my reviews on the Speed 400. Overall, as I said in the intro, I absolutely love this bike. Apart from that little issue, which is weird of the engine shutting itself off, and that might just be down to this particular press bike that I've got, so unless you hear reports of that elsewhere, maybe ignore that. But other than that, the bike has been absolutely brilliant. I've really enjoyed my time with it. It goes and stops well, it's really great fun. It's so lightweight, it's, it handles beautifully, and that price is just unbeatable. I really love the Speed 400. Uh, so thank you Trump for lending it to me and uh, can I have a go with the Scrambler 400 please? I'd love a go on that one as well, uh, just to do a bit of a comparison. Anyway, thanks to you for watching as ever, look forward to speaking to you again soon. Until then, this has been the Mr. and Fly, cheerio. And bonus points for anyone that uh, counted the number of times that I said clutching at straws during that review.